Hello and good morning, Eddie. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. I want to thank you for this book because growing up in Billings, Montana, we didn't have books like this that told the stories of Native Americans and the lifestyle. What we had, we had history books. And I love the way that you are bringing this Indian kid into a storybook form where people can say, you know what? I I want to write my own story. I want to be able to get out there and share the story of my elders as well. Yeah, thanks. To put the book together, where did the inspiration come from, Eddie? Because, I mean, this this is stepping out there. Well, uh, my first book uh, was a collection of short stories. And uh, some, of, uh, some, some of my uh, experiences from youth would pop up in it. and uh, But they didn't really fit into the story I was writing. But I, I was just kind of discovering all these things that had happened to me as a kid. So I kind of made a side note of it. And when I finished those stories, uh, I went back and uh, expanded on the Tishomingo section. And uh, I showed my agent, and he, he liked it. And he goes, do you have, uh, you know, a lot more of these stories of you growing up? Because I, I can see a memoir here, and that's how that started. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm glad that you gave yourself permission to do that because, I mean, to, to, so many times people, writers especially, will hide their material and, and it's not going to be released. Because I've sat down with many elders and they've said that they, it saddened their heart because they didn't want to share their stories. And he says, we, we're all about sharing stories. That's what the circle is about. All right. Did you grow up in such a circle? Yeah, uh... One of the families that uh, I kind of grew up with, you know, this was before our cable TV was just not coming along, so it wasn't like our streaming wasn't even thought of then. But uh, we would, uh, towards the end of the day, you know, it was a rather large family, and everyone would finally be home at night, and everyone would go around talking about uh, what happened to them that day, you know, acting out stuff like if they met someone who uh, had a particular... uh, the way they talked or uh, the way they looked or whatever, they just kind of act out or whatever happened to you that day in like story form. Mm -hmm. Starting in journalism at such an early age, I mean, you knew about storytelling way before most people even jump into it. That usually comes after college, but you knew that it was time to start sharing stories as a teen. All right. Uh, I actually started writing when I was a five or six years old wow. we lived out in the country in Muskogee and then there was you know like I said there was no uh, social media we didn't even barely had TV so I, I did a lot of reading and then uh, writing I just picked up pencil and paper one day and just started doing it and my grandma saved the first story I wrote back when I was like five or six do you still have it today? no we were looking for it uh, for this book and uh since i'm in minneapolis and all the other stuff back in oklahoma i had to uh ask my mom to look for it she couldn't find it but she did find a lot of photos and stuff but that particular story couldn't find but i know she saved it because i saw it you know uh maybe 20 years ago somewhere but yeah she saved it the importance of this book being released right now is is so huge in my heart and so many other hearts because as the reservation dogs on television is coming to an end, people want more stories about real, authentic Native Americans. And this book right here is it, it's it's a part of it. It's it's a part of the new culture of sharing the stories of those that 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 have been hidden away because nobody wants to talk about it. Yes, we do. And I think that, that what that will do is, it, is it, if we get more stories coming out, that we're going to shoot down some of these stereotypes about yes. all natives live on the reservation. All natives go to powwows. Uh, my grandma, Full Blood Creek, a great grandma, you know, she didn't even speak English as a kid, uh, lived to be uh, around 90 or in her 80s, never went to a powwow. Hmm. Never. She's Full Blood Indian and... Uh, that's because back in her day, that wasn't a thing. Powwows weren't, 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 just weren't a thing, you know. Uh, any dances were more traditional. Right. Or, uh, you know, like, and even if you didn't do that, like uh, she married a, a, a Baptist preacher, and that was frowned upon 
among the church going set, going to these traditional song dances. So, uh, yeah, so she probably didn't even do much of that, much less powwows. Wow. What was it like? Nothing against powwows. I just, yeah. I was going to say, nothing against powwows. I just wasn't raised up going. You know, I've been and everything. It's just not a, something I don't do every weekend or anything. Right, right, right. Learning how to put the thoughts onto paper, that transition to be able to take it from short stories into this book right here, a memoir. I mean, my God, I mean, was was that a growing period for you? Was it, how, how did you make that transition? Uh, I've written columns before, personal columns for uh, newspapers. Mm-hmm. So I was actually anxious to try to get a, uh, uh, to do this, the only problem I had was, uh, you know, being a fiction writer all these years, I'd come to a spot and I'd say, well, why don't we just have him, you know, like go back home and come back. <laughs> that way it'll look, you know, and well, you can't do that because you're just making stuff up. But one of my first attempts, I started writing about uh, that family, uh, the, the Tiger family in, in uh, Muskogee. I was uh, trying to write a... Uh, Nonfiction piece about I was going to get the the car. It was a Mercedes Benz. Get it uh, and inspe- tell you get it inspected in Oklahoma. They don't do that anymore. I don't think. Right. They used to have these little stickers on the side, uh, and uh, the uh, the mechanics uh, scraped it off and said they found a little tiny hole there. And uh, and I was trying to write a, a straightforward. Uh, Nonfiction account, but then I started drifting off in fiction again. I started making up quotes yeah, and uh, yep. making up stuff that didn't happen. You just got to watch out for that. <laughs> but that's what's fun about being a writer and that's why I always yeah. tell you know and, and that's one of the reasons why I'm a daily writer in a journal so that I can get it as it's happening and then this way I can always go back and pick up where I, it's almost like saying dear future reader in fact that's the way I describe this book uh, to people to about your book is the fact that it's almost like Eddie sat down and said dear future reader yeah. Is that what you're thinking about when when you're when you're writing for YA readers? Yes, thinking about uh, who actually is going to be reading this and at, at what age and uh, what hopefully they'll learn from it. Yeah. That, uh, Native American uh, life in the, uh, America right now is so diverse, and it's it's not just. You know, uh, living on a reservation. You're so right about that. Eddie, where can people go to find out more information about your writing? Because I want people to fall in love with your writing in the way that I have, and that it really is a story and it, there is a journey here. Well, they, they can start with my first book. It's called Cheyenne Madonna, a book of short stories, uh, Black Sparrow Press out of Boston. You can get that at bookstores or online. And uh, obviously, by this Indian kid, which is also available in book bookshops and uh, and online through Scholastic. Mm-hmm. Okay, I can't wait to talk to you more and more in the future, sir, because I love what you're doing with your writing. I appreciate it, Errol. Excellent. Will you be brilliant today? Okay, sir. Will do, and you as well. Thank you.